Okay, really haven't done much in the way of 3D printing uh, for a very, very long time. And uh, just got rid of the, uh, the big flight simulator setup I had in here. So now I've got some room to get back and do some uh, proper 3D printing. So that's the idea. Um, if anyone remembers, we had uh, upgraded this uh, Ender 3 Pro. We've got BL Touch. Uh, we've got uh, dual geared. Uh, drive. We'll be changing all this to a direct drive. That'll be the next thing which I've got over there to do. But today's project, uh, oh, we've also got the um, uh, Big Tree Tech uh, main board and the Big Tree Tech touch screen. Uh, this came from Amazon. It's just a ball bearing spool holder, and uh, I suspected I was going to put it to the side somewhere and have it have it feeding straight in. Um, this actually managed to print some TPU off uh, pretty well for some uh, Celestron telescope feet that I made up uh, a few days ago. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's all going to be changed. Uh, that is going to be really useful for the direct drive. The spool will sit on there and go uh, straight down into the direct drive. And what we fitted today, if I can get this to turn around on its rubber feet, was the uh, dual axis, sorry, dual, um, yeah, dual axis uh, Z drive and uh, all the parts came a couple of days ago and let me just slide that forward. So we've basically got a cable splitter here, uh, goes into there and then another one into this new motor. Uh, pretty much uh, a straightforward setup. There was a new metal bracket to fit here. The wheels were the same. The eccentric wheel is the same. Uh, you can see that they are floating bearings. They also give you a new one for this side, as you can see, floating. If you had fitted the modification to this motor, um, I don't know, this is a few years old now, this machine, but you 3D printed a new piece here that went down behind the motor here and just shimmed it out a little bit. That's actually had to be removed and go back to the normal piece. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, no issues with that. Just got to tidy the cables up. I've uh, brought this up and down a few times. It was actually quite surprising how many of the screws on this machine were loose over the two years. Some of them had worked their way quite loose. Um, so I went over the whole lot and uh, tightened everything again. Um, there was a few issues with this not being entirely square and it wouldn't come much up above halfway before it was stalling so I actually stripped the lot out both sides and uh, loosened the frame, retightened the screws in the frame and uh, reassembled it all and this time it is absolutely perfect and it will go to maximum travel and then actually this restricts it going any higher and then it starts to uh, struggle and misses steps which obviously you don't want to do. So uh, probably tomorrow now we're going to get this stripped out and uh, get that uh, MicroSwift Direct Drive extruder fitted and then that's pretty much all we can do I think with uh, this machine. Um, I've got some TPU parts to print out. I uh, reinstalled um, the slicer and forgot to save all my data so all my custom G codes <laughs> gone so I'm going to have to start from scratch but it, uh, it shouldn't take uh, too long to get it all set up and calibrated again so uh, it's, it would have had to have been uh, calibrated again after all of these modifications anyway so uh, yeah it's not too bad. Right so yeah we'll uh, update you when the uh, new hot end is uh, fitted.